What's up ladies and gentlemen, Hockey Time here, back again with another video. It is finally the beginning of the NHL regular season. I am recording this approximately 15 minutes before the start of the Tampa Bay Lightning New York Rangers game. Uh, but wanted to start a new series for you guys. I think I'm going to do these probably weekly or bi-weekly, usually on Fridays, but got to squeeze it in before the season starts. So we're going to be doing power rankings here. I will have a more formal setup for this in the coming videos, but wanted to give you guys my primary tier list before the season started. So just using tier list maker to get it done quickly. Shout out tier list maker. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Uh, just pretty simply 32 to 25, 24 to 17, 16 to nine, and then eight to one on the tiers here. So in 32nd place, I think we have to start with the Arizona Coyotes, probably the weakest roster coming into the season. Not a lot of additions, really goaltending pretty weak, defense pretty weak, scoring pretty weak. So not too much argument against having the Coyotes in 32nd. 31st, we're going to have the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, Hawks in kind of a similar spot alongside a lot of drama. There's a lot of people that would probably be okay with having the Blackhawks at 32nd. But 31st, 32nd, either way, not really expected to do much this season. So we have the Hawks at 31st. In 30th, I think I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Flyers, another team that's just had a lot of turmoil going on, uh, obviously missing out on the opportunity to snag Johnny Gaudreau in the offseason, which would have been a big add. But this is a team that um, kind of doesn't have a direction right now, right? I mean, the the Flyers are one of those teams that are – last year they lost on accident. This year in the offseason, they almost still tried to make some additions. I mean, they gave up draft picks to – take in a guy like Tony D'Angelo. Um, one of those additions is pretty confusing because the team on paper is still pretty damn bad, um, but they're trying to make additions to the team. So I think they need a shakeup in leadership there in Philadelphia. So I have them at 30th. Uh, 29th, I think I am going to go with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, solely putting them above Philadelphia because of their direction, right? Again, talking about direction with teams here. They know what they're going for. They're all in on the Connor Bedard sweepstakes this season. And I think they're actually going to be pretty competitive in a good chunk of their games, assuming Jake Allen stays healthy. Decent goaltending. Their D might be a bit rough, but they have some young guns that can score. They have an exciting future. They know what they're building towards, unlike the Flyers that I think are kind of all over the place. So putting the Canadians ahead of the Flyers, if the tier list would cooperate here, um, simply based on direction. Again, this tier list will get updated pretty regularly. The teams will all bounce around, but for now, 29th, Montreal Canadiens. 28th, I think I am going to go with the San Jose Sharks. Another team kind of struggling with direction. I think they kind of understand, they've acknowledged that they're on the downward trend, but their team is still just good enough that they're going to be around, I think, this fifth last spot in the league at the end of the year. I don't think they're bad enough to really, truly commit to the tank. They still have Timo Meyer, still have Tomas Hurdle. Still have the skeleton of Eric Carlson, but he's probably still going to get you 40 to 50 points. So the Sharks are going to be an interesting team to watch. Interesting to watch Mike Greer, what moves he makes throughout the season. But I think they're 28th for now. 27th. Um, forgive me for any of the hesitation here. I'm doing just a quick one take before this game starts here in, uh, in a couple minutes. I think for 27th, I am going to go with... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I think I'm going to go with the Buffalo Sabres. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to go with the Seattle Kraken. Um, the Kraken made some good additions this offseason, but they're relying pretty heavily on a bounce back from the likes of Philip Grubauer. Um, a lot of additional scoring from Burakovsky. Um, and then, you know, what can their young kids do? They're an exciting team to watch this year. I, I think it's going to be a huge improvement from last year where not only were they bad, but they weren't fun to watch. At least now they have some young guns that people can look forward to. They have some hope for the future, right? Um, but on paper, again, another roster that's just not all that great. Um, so for now, Seattle will be 27th. 26th, I think I will now slot Buffalo in. Uh, Buffalo, another team that a lot of hope at the end of last year, right? They had the, the big Jack Eichel trade. Alex Tuck comes in, and their lineup kind of clicks. I mean, Tage Thompson had a great year. Jeff Skinner, a bounce back year. Craig Anderson played pretty well for his age. Um, and then you have some ads this year, like Eric Comrie, it's going to come in. I would expect Uko Pekalukanen to get some starts this year. Not anything crazy, but a handful of starts for, for Lukan in there. Um, and then some exciting young pieces. I mean, Thompson's still a young guy. Um, and then the likes of JJ Paterka, Jack Quinn, 
um, another season out of Dylan Cousins. So some exciting stuff going on in Buffalo. I just think, again, on paper, their roster's not quite there. Um, and then 25th. Who do we have 25th? I think I will probably go with the Ducks at 25th. Another team, exciting young core, some hope moving forward, but just not the best team on paper. Um, they did make some good additions this offseason. John Klingberg, Ryan Strom, um, hopefully a bounce back year for John Gibson, but for now they're still going to be in this bottom row, I think. Um, but another team that in the next couple years should be pretty competitive, pretty fun to watch. Um, unlike Seattle, they're already fun to watch now. I mean, when you have Trevor Zegras... Had Sonny Milano, have Troy Terry. There's going to be some exciting moments throughout the year, whether they perform well or not. Um, all right, moving up to the next row, 24th. I think probably just edging out the Anaheim Ducks is going to be the Columbus Blue Jackets. Obviously, they scored the big fish this offseason. They got Johnny Gaudreau, but... Still too many question marks for me um, on the rest of their roster. I do expect Goudreau and Liney to click pretty well and probably have some, some pretty solid numbers this season. But we need to bounce back from Merzlikens. That decor is really just not anything fantastic. I expect them to be okay, but none of the names there really stand out aside from Zach Wierenski, and even he had a bit of a down year last year. So not expecting too much out of Columbus. They're one of those teams that could definitely surprise some people, I think. Um, but for now, going to keep them in the 24th slot. Uh, 23rd, I think I'm going to go with the New Jersey Devils, just ahead of the Blue Jackets here. Um, just like in my standings predictions, two pretty similar teams. Devils, I think, probably have more high-end skill looking toward the future. Obviously, Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, Luke Hughes down the road, hoping for a bounce back from Mackenzie Blackwood. So a lot of good pieces there, obviously. Added Andre Palat in the offseason, so... Another team that should be exciting to watch, but just not quite there yet on paper, in my opinion, but would definitely expect to see some exciting things out of New Jersey this year and look for them to kind of build momentum and maybe contest for a playoff spot next year. And who knows? I could be very wrong. I saw uh, Dom LeCision's playoff predictions earlier today on Twitter, and there was, I believe he had New Jersey making the playoffs and having over 100 points. So if that happens, that would be pretty, pretty incredible for them. Um, we'll see. They should be pretty fun to watch this year. Uh, 22nd, 22nd, I think I'm going to go with the, hmm, this is tough. We're already into this area where most of the teams I'm looking at here are pretty good. I think for now, I probably have to go with Winnipeg. Um, not so much because of the talent on their roster, more so their locker room struggles, um, and their struggles kind of as, as a whole as a team. They have some good pieces. They're still Kyle Connor can still score 40 goals pretty easily. Connor Hellebuck still one of the better goalies in the league. Um, you can't completely write off Shifley or Blake Wheeler, but just a lot of question marks in that room. What are they going to be capable of this year? Can they have a bounce back in really all aspects of the game? Um, no one really stood out last year as having a fantastic season. Um, so expect to bounce back from the Winnipeg Jets, but for now going to keep them in that 22nd slot. 21st. Um, I think I'm going to go with the New York Islanders. You could probably interchange the Islanders and the Jets, to be completely honest. Um, I think that they are going to see a bit of improvement, especially at the beginning of the year here, um, just because they had such a rough start to last season. I mean, starting with so many games on the road, getting hit so hard by COVID, I mean, they really could not catch a break for the first half of the year. Um, but some really good pieces on that team. Obviously, the new contract for Matt Barzell, a little bit questionable in my opinion, but we'll see if he can make the money worth it for him. Um, as I mentioned in my goaltending tier list videos, I think one of, if not the best goaltending tandems in the league. Uh, if you guys listened to the most recent episode of the Hockey Time podcast, I did pick Ilya Sorokin as my projected Vesna winner for this year. So keeping my fingers crossed that I can get that right, I think they have a lot of good pieces there um, in New York. So I'll be interested to see what they can make happen this year. Um, on to the 20th slot here. I think I'm going to go with the Detroit Red Wings. Um, this one more so based on momentum from the offseason than anything else. They added a ton of new pieces. Another team that's got a bright future ahead of them. And I think just going into this year, they are riding on more of a high than the Islanders are. And I think that just edges the Islanders out 
for that 20th spot. So a lot of exciting stuff to see from from the Red Wings this year. What can Billy Huso do? Uh, does Nedeljkovic bounce back? How do the likes of Andrew Kopp, Ben Chirot, David Perron all fit in on a relatively young team? Um, and then as far as the returning guys, what, what do we expect to see out of Mo Sider and Lucas Raymond? Um, Dylan Larkin coming up on a potential contract extension. What does his production look like this year? A lot of good stuff to watch out of Detroit. Um, on to 19th. This is where we're starting to get into these like bubble playoff teams. I think I'm going to put the Vegas Golden Knights at 19th for now. I'm sure by the end of this video, I will have shaken this tier list up a bit. But for me, the biggest thing with Vegas, as I'm sure most people will agree, is the question marks in net. We don't know what Logan Thompson's capable of, if they expect him to be the full-time starter, if that's going to be Aiden Hill. I don't expect it to be Laurent Boissois, but that's a possibility too. Or do they go and look to make an acquisition at some point throughout the season? That wouldn't shock me either. Um, but for now, keeping Vegas just outside this like playoff echelon of teams in the top two rows, um, I think they still have a lot of good pieces everywhere else on the ice. Um, still a pretty solid group of defensemen, obviously some talent up front, Jack Eichel, Mark Stone, Chandler Stevenson, etc. Um, so they're going to be able to score. I think they're not going to give up too, too many goals, but there's going to be nights where they probably just need a save or two from their goalie that they're not getting. And I think that's going to hurt them. Um, the question is just how much it's going to hurt them. So for now, going to keep them at 19th. 18th, I think I'm going to go with the Washington Capitals at 18. Uh, again, this one pains me a little bit, but as a Caps fan, I do have them just missing the playoffs this year. Um, as I mentioned in my, my predictions, I have Ottawa just squeaking in in front of them. Um, the Caps for me have a lot of question marks. I mean, Backstrom likely to miss most, if not all, of this season. Um, Dylan Strom and Lars Eller have to kind of fill that, that second center hole. Um, and we don't know really what to expect out of either of them there. I mean, Lars Eller has spent some time there over the last few seasons um, in the instances that Backstrom and Kuznetsov have been out. But I don't think he's capable of being that guy full-time, and we don't know exactly what to expect out of Dylan Strom coming into the season. I think he has some promise, um, but I'm trying to keep my expectations uh, reasonable going into the season. Um, and then, I mean, the rest of the lineup, Ovi's going to be Ovi. Um, a lot of their older guys, we kind of know what to expect. The Oshis, the Manthas. Um, I think the the big question marks for me are what is John Carlson capable of? He's still the big horse on the uh, on the group of defensemen. Um, which of Genny Kuznetsov do we see? And what is Darcy Kemper going to look like behind a team that's not as completely stacked as the Colorado Avalanche were last year? So some question marks for me on the Capitals. I am excited to watch them, of course. But for now, I'm going to keep them in 18th. And my last team in the bottom two rows, man, this is tough. I think I have to go with the Boston Bruins. Um, the Bees, just because of their injuries. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, I think the Bees probably have to even go back here. So it would be Cap 17, Vegas 18, Boston 19. I completely spaced on the injuries they have going into the season. Um, I would expect them to move up this list as the year goes along, but given the current state of their roster, um, tough to put them above teams like Vegas and Washington. And honestly, I'm sure there could be arguments to be made to even put them behind Detroit, Winnipeg, Long Island, New Jersey, etc. Um, but again, I do expect the Bruins to bounce back from the injuries. Um, their goalie tan is a pretty solid one. They still have Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci coming back. Um, Pasta's pasta. I would expect Marshawn to go on an absolute tear once he returns. So not too worried about the Bruins, but I am going to keep them in the bottom two rows here at the uh, 19th spot. Moving on to the top two rows in our first team here, I think I'm going to go with the Dallas Stars. Um, Dallas finally got the Jason Robertson deal done right. Um, I think it's kind of a good fit for both teams. Obviously, Robertson probably wanted more money, more term, considering his production last year. Dallas, of course, kind of in a bit of a panic, just trying to get him on the roster before night one for them. Um, but I expect some good things out of Dallas this year. I'm one of those teams that I'm secretly pretty excited about. I love Jake Ottinger. Um, I always find myself rooting for the young goalies being a goalie myself. So 
expect a lot out of him this year. Hope he can perform very well. Maybe be in the Vesna conversation if he keeps up his performance from the playoffs last year. Um, do have Dallas as a playoff team, and I think their their lineup's okay. I think if we can get a little bit of a bounce back from Ben and Sagan, if Robertson, Rupe Hens, Miro Haskin, and none of them take any steps back, they should be a really solid team. They're not going to be fun to play against. Um, so yeah, Dallas in my 16th spot. 15th, uh, just edging them out, I think, for now, is going to be the Ottawa Senators. Trying not to push Ottawa up too far, despite how excited I am about their lineups, um, or their roster, excuse me. Not a Sens fan, but just so excited to see what this team's capable of this year. Um, just so much so much exciting uh, skill, speed, talent on this team, um, and just a lot of good storylines. I mean, that, that decor is going to have to step up in a big way if they want to make the playoffs, but if they can do that, the Sens are going to be a team that's just so hard to keep up with. There's very few teams that have a one-two punch in their first two lines like the Sens do. Uh, so just really excited to watch them this season and see what they're capable of. And I think for now I'm going to keep them in 15th. 14th, just above them, is going to be the Vancouver Canucks. Pretty similar. I am a Canucks fan, uh, so probably a bit biased in my opinion here. However, uh, Thatcher Demko, a concrete, outstanding number one goalie. Um, still a lot of talent on this team. They really just need a lot of it to bounce back, and I think they're capable of that. I think Boudreaux did a good job kind of lighting a fire under them last season, and hopefully they can continue that momentum. Um, I would expect them to make the playoffs this year, assuming that everyone stays healthy and there's not some kind of collapse in net. Um, so yeah, excited to watch Vancouver for sure. I think a pretty skilled team, relatively deep team. Keep them at 14th for now. 13th. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Kings. At, uh, yeah, we'll go with the Los Angeles Kings at 13th. Um, very good season last year. I think probably overperformed a little bit. Um, they add Kevin Fiala in the offseason. They're going to get Drew Doughty back. Still have uh, Jonathan Quick and Cal Peterson as their goaltending duo. Really going to come down to, I think, what those two guys are capable of. Cal Peterson under for, underperformed quite a bit last season. Quick was about what we expected throughout the year and then played pretty well in the playoffs. Um, so I think it's going to come down a lot to, to those two guys, how much they're capable of, what their game share looks like. Um, but I would expect them to be pretty strong this season. I do have them just missing the playoffs. I kind of have a feeling I'm going to end up eating those words come April, but we'll see what happens with Los Angeles. Um, next up, I think this is where it starts to get really tough, man. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Nashville up next. Um, Nashville didn't really have too big of an off season, but um, I think 12th, is a fitting spot for them. They're a pretty solid team all around. Still some good pieces on defense. Obviously, they still have Roman Yossi. A pretty deep group of forwards, though they are aging a bit. They have some young talent that's coming up too. So I'm excited to see what they're capable of this year. And then if Kevin Lankinen can take some games off of poor UC Saros' shoulders, um, I think he could be healthy going into the playoffs. And that's one of those teams, much like Dallas was for Calgary, that you really do not want to run into because I think they have the ability to score just a little bit more than Dallas does. And Saros, we all know, has been fantastic. So um, a lot of this, again, hinges on UC Saros, his numbers, his health, etc. But if he's healthy and playing well, no real concerns about the Nashville Predators. Um, coming in at 11, I think I'm going to go with the St. Louis Blues. Um, another relatively quiet off season. Um, they do lose Vili Husso, David Perron, but still a pretty strong group there. Obviously two young guns in Jordan Kyra and Robert Thomas that we're just going to hope continue to progress, continue to fill holes where need be in the loss of points from David Perron. But St. Louis last year was one of those teams that had just like 20 goals from so many guys. I think it was eight or eight or nine of their guys had 20 plus goal seasons last year, which is just unheard of. Um, and they're really not you not losing too much of that depth. Um, another team that really hinges on their goaltending. If Jordan Bennington can play well, they should be fine. If he doesn't play well, then some more responsibility falls back onto Thomas Grace. And I don't know how comfortable a lot of the St. Louis Blues fans are going to be with that. But I think a little bit more deep than Nashville, a little bit more comfortable with them as a roster on paper. For now, going to keep them in the 11 spot at number 10. 
first team here in the top 10. I think I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, until the day he hangs up the skates, it's going to be hard to count out Sidney Crosby. Um, Chris Letang, Evgeny Malkin, uh, all-star goalie Tristan Jari, right? Um, still a lot of pieces there in Pittsburgh. Um, they're really just becoming a group of old men at this point, but they're still a pretty damn good hockey team. So um, assuming everyone stays healthy in Pittsburgh, I would expect them to make the playoffs, probably the three seed, maybe the two seed, depending on how the Rangers and Igor Shesterkin do. But I think the Penguins are going to be fine, and I have them at 10th. In 9th, I'm going to go with the Minnesota Wild. They do lose Kevin Fiala and Cam Talbot in the offseason, um, but a full season of Matt Boldy, Marco Rossi making their roster. Um, another team that has a lot of promise despite the cap situation they're in. It's pretty crazy what Bill Guerin's been able to do for that team. Um, if Flurry can stay healthy, keeps good numbers, Kaprizov doesn't take a step back, I expect to see some growth out of Matt Boldy. Uh, I think Marco Rossi is going to be a great fit for them. I have a lot of confidence in what Minnesota can do this year, so I think uh, nine perfectly fitting for them would not be surprised if they made me eat my words and jumped even further. Um, and here we are in the top eight. Uh, really, any of these teams, you can make an argument for the first spot. I mean, they're all such deep talented fast teams um but someone's got to go eighth and i think for now that probably belongs to the florida panthers um as much as picking up matt kachuk helps um losing mackenzie Weger and jonathan huberto hurts a lot um and i think that their group of defensemen is going to struggle a bit more than they did even last year um they're still going to be able to outscore a lot of their problems but their group of defensemen does make me a little nervous Perfectly fine with their goaltending. Obviously, another very strong tandem in um, Sergei Bobrovsky and Spencer Knight. But to me, it really comes down to that group of defensemen. What are they capable of? Can they keep the puck out of their own net enough that they can continue to outscore their problems? Do have them as a top row team, but probably the team that I have the most questions with in the top row. Um, number seven. Oh, man. M might come as a surprise to some people. I have the Stanley Cup... Champion Colorado Avalanche at seven for now. Um, obviously, just coming off a cup win, how can I be putting them at seven? They lose their second line center and their Stanley Cup winning starting goaltender. Those are two huge, huge, huge holes to fill. Now, they do have a lot of guys on their roster that can play center, but what does it do to the rest of their lineup? If they move Gabe Landeskog, to the second line center role. I know he's been primarily a winger the last few years, but if we move Gabe to line two, what does that do to the first line? I've heard some rumblings about trying to move Ranton into center. I don't know how much of a fan I am of that. Um, Arturi Lekkanen can play some center. That again impacts other lines. So I think it's going to come down to one of JT Comfer or Alex Newhook needing to step up. How much are they capable of in a, a role to see some more responsibility? And then what can Alex Yorgiev do in net? Um, this will be his first shot as being the true number one guy. But mentally for him, I think it's still going to be a bit of a battle because he's still going to have um, Pavel Franzos kind of breathing down his neck. I think it's an opportunity for Franzos if he comes out and has a good start to the year, if Yorgiev's struggling at all. It could very well be his starting job moving forward, and I think... Um, through what we've seen in New York, Georgiev wants to be in a spot where it's his crease and he knows it's his crease. And I think this is still a situation where there's some uncertainty there. Obviously, the Avs are expecting Georgiev to be the guy, but um, just from an internal mindset standpoint for Georgiev, I could still see it being a bit of a struggle for him. So going to have the Avs at seven. I would very much expect them to move up. Um, obviously, still one of the deepest rosters in the league. Didn't even touch on the group of defensemen, which is just absolutely outstanding i mean they just have an abundance of riches um kill mccarr devin taves you know bo byram the list goes on um it's it's pretty incredible the group of defensemen they've put together there in denver so i expect the ass to be fine i expect to probably move them up this list but for now don't hit me too hard gonna put them at seventh um at sixth i think i'm gonna go with the new york rangers um we need to see if they can pick up the goal scoring a bit. I wouldn't expect Igor to repeat what he was capable of last year. I still think he's going to be a top three, top two, maybe just the best goalie in the league. 
However, expecting him to repeat what he did last year is probably a bit unfair. So for now, going to keep them in sixth. We need to see what that group's capable of, how their new pieces fit, but I think the Rangers are going to be just fine. Um, in fifth, I have the... Hmm, we'll go with the Flames in fifth. Um, obviously, losing Gaudreau and Kachuk hurts a lot. You bring in Mackenzie Weger, Nazem Kadri, and Jonathan Huberto. So, not a wash. There's a lot of different play styles in play here between the ones that left and the ones that are coming in. I, as I've mentioned before, I'm of the belief that the Flames did get better this offseason. Um, we'll see what they're capable of. Um, obviously, it's a, a, a new lineup for them, but I think their goaltending's great. Their defense is great. They can score in handfuls, so not too worried about the Flames. I think they're a really solid team, another one of those teams that, much like Dallas, much like Nashville, you do not want to see in the playoffs because they have a lot of sandpaper and it's very hard to score on them when Markstrom's on his game. So, for now, fifth, Calgary. Fourth, we will go with the other end of the Battle of Alberta, um, the Edmonton Oilers. Um, despite the fact that they have yet to win a cup, it is maybe even harder to count out McDavid and Dreisaitl than it is Sidney Crosby going into the season. He, after being so close to the Stanley Cup Finals, is going to be hungry, motivated, driven, whatever word you want to use. Um, and Leon Dreisaitl should be healthier. Um, and now they have a true number one goalie in Jack Campbell. So um, I think the Oilers are just going to be a force to be reckoned with this year. I was listening to, I believe, the Steve Dangle podcast a couple days ago. Shout out to Steve Dangle podcast crew. Um, and they kind of referenced that it's no longer about trying to scrape into the playoffs for Edmonton. It's about getting there. They're in a pretty similar um situation is like Tampa, right? It's kind of a given that they're going to make the playoffs despite some kind of crazy disaster. Um, it's really about what they can do after April. Um, so again, Oilers, I think are going to be a menace of a team to deal with this year. Um, expect them to make the playoffs. Expect another Art Ross from Connor McDavid. Um, it's really just going to be about what they can do in the playoffs. Um, a very similar team, the Toronto Maple Leafs, pretty much all the same Statements can be made here. Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander. Um, the biggest question for them is in net. Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov are two big, big question marks. But uh, I have some confidence in Matt Murray. I think he's going to do well. I think he can bounce back as long as he stays healthy. The Leafs, I think, are going to be a juggernaut, much like they have been in the regular season for the past handful of years. Um, just like Edmonton, though, it's about what they can do after they get in. Um the most unfortunate thing for them is that obviously my one and two seeds that are remaining are both Eastern Conference teams. Um, and second, I am going to have the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, hard to count out, much like the likes of McDavid, Crosby, etc. Um, the guys in Tampa have proven just how good they are and just how driven they are to win. It would have been very easy for them after winning the Cup in the bubble um, to lighten up, you know, take the first half of the year off in year two when they ended up winning the cup again. But no, they go back, win a second one, go for the three-peat, and just fall short to an absolutely incredibly talented Colorado Avalanche team. Tampa's just fine. They still have plenty of pieces in place. Um, another year of losing some important depth pieces, but they have guys in place already to fill those holes. They have Brandon Hagel. They have Nick Paul. Um, they still have arguably the best goalie in the world. I expect them to be just fine. Um, still just as much of a juggernaut as they were going into that first Stanley Cup win. And the top spot in my power ranking does belong to the Carolina Hurricanes. I expect to get some heat for this one. However, um, they have, in my opinion, the deepest team in the league um, all around. I mean, just a ridiculous amount of forward depth up front. Picked up Max Pacioretty for free, basically, from Vegas. Obviously, he's hurt for the first part of the season, but... Um, when he gets healthy, they're just going to be, I feel like, pretty unstoppable. They have two very capable goalies and Freddie Anderson and Auntie Ranta. And then their group of defensemen, um, they lose Tony D'Angelo, which hurts. But at the same time, it's Tony D'Angelo. So we don't know what locker room issues, if any, existed from him last year. But you go from one guy who is primarily an offensive defenseman to another guy who is also primarily an offensive defenseman in Brett Burns. Um 
not worry about Carolina at all. So much scoring depth, so much defensive depth, two very capable goalies. And honestly, um, even if both of Anderson and Ronto were to go down, we saw a glimpse of what Peter Kachekka was capable of in the playoffs last year. So heaven forbid he has to go into a couple games. I'm still not worried about the Carolina Hurricanes. I think they um, have the all-in deepest roster in the NHL going into the season. But we will see what happens. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. I am about to tune into this Tampa Bay-New York game and celebrate the beginning of the regular season finally. So let me know your thoughts below again. I'm sure most of you will probably disagree with this. This will fluctuate week to week. I think my plan moving forward is going to be to upload these Friday nights right before you know the big Saturday that happens pretty much every week. Um, that way I can kind of take in all those games at the beginning of the week and go from there um, and then update it again the following Friday. So... Let me know your thoughts below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the content. Um, subscribe if you'd like as well. It is free. Um, looking forward to doing more of these as the season progresses and happy that the regular season is finally here. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you very soon. See ya.